All right, for this video, I'm going to uh, talk about a demo uh, I set up, a demo website that showcases some of the things that uh, Niagara Files can do for you. Um, so, of course, if you have any questions, you can uh, look at my website. Uh, it talks about uh, more in depth about NiFi. And, of course, you can always send me an email if you have any specific NiFi questions. So, for the demo, um, how a demo works is I have a secured version of NiFi running that will require you to download a uh, cert that I created. It's a self signed cert uh, that will give you guest access to this uh, website. So as a guest access, all you'll really be able to do is just pretty much view the um, view the flows and not really interact too much with them. You can't start or stop anything or delete anything. You can just pretty much just see how the flows work. So some of the processing I do, for example, of the JSON data or the XML data, um, you can see how NIFI can be used to kind of parse that information and then forward that information to a database. In order to get started, you're going to have to go to the... Uh, main web page. Uh, it's not secured. Um, it just pretty much is going to describe everything I'm going to tell you in this video. And it'll look something like this. And this is the actual site you'll go to to download that cert I told you about. And it'll also have the password as well. Uh, in order to access, again, to access the secured NIFI, you're going to have to download the self-signed cert. I think it's called guess.p12. Uh, you import that cert into your browser. I happen to use Firefox. Uh, use Firefox as my browser. And then you go ahead and navigate to that uh, secure uh, website, and then you'll be able to see some of the flows I put together. Again, you'll just be able to look at them. You won't be able to do too much about start or stop or, or uh, change anything about them. And again, that website is a secure website, so it's just an HTTPS. And then the website will look something like this. The flows I put together um, are just some examples of some of the things you can do with NiFi, um, different ways to get data, different ways to process data. Um, I have a flow that uh, is called Earthquake Demo. It actually goes out to the USGS website once an hour and retrieves the last 24 hours of earthquake data that happened throughout the world. It's an XML file, I believe. And it gets that information, it parses it, and then it stores the results into a database. Another flow I put together is I call it Disney Wait Times. And what this flow does is it goes out to the uh, Disney website. There's a Disney API. It goes out and uh, queries um, the Disney database, I guess, for the wait times for all its current attractions. Um, for this particular flow, I had to write a custom processor to actually go out and talk to this Disney website to get the wait times. And again, all this information is collected, and it's also stored into a database. And the parks I use are the ones that are just in Disney World right now. So I didn't try to go through the other ones throughout the world, but you could easily could have. And with this particular flow, it goes out every five minutes. And I have it running between 9 a.m. and 10 p.m. There's no sense in going out at 3 in the morning asking for data when the parks happen to be closed. So I just happen to, you know, again, just another feature where you can actually fine-tune how often you want to collect data and what time period. And finally, the, the last flow I really kind of did was called something called NetFlow. And if you go to that main web page, it, it kind of talks about what NetFlow is and where you can find information about it. But basically what NetFlow is, it's a, something that was developed by Cisco Systems for their routers where they could monitor traffic going across their routers. And then they could actually bill their customers based upon how much traffic was uh, went through it. And what people found this useful for was they could actually, you know, monitor traffic going across their own ne own networks to see, you know, if, you know, different types of data is going through, or how often is data going through different web addresses and stuff like that. So some of the routers nowadays come of come equipped with NetFlow, and the router I have happens to have NetFlow capability. And basically, what it does is it just sends the NetFlow traffic to another machine that I have listening for NetFlow data. In this case, it's a Raspberry Pi that's running uh, something called Minify. It's a smaller version of NiFi. It actually collects this data, it compresses it, and it merges it all into one file and then sends it up to the main secured NiFi uh, about every five minutes. And again, this data is also parsed, and it's actually uh, stored in the database as well. Um, on the side, I have a web page set up, um, a web page flow that actually will process web requests. So you, the purpose of that was to be able to uh, graphically represent some of the flows I just talked about um, on a web page. So it's not secure or anything like that, but uh, you have to know what 
URL to use, and the URLs are described in the main web page that I just talked about earlier. Um, it's just a way just to show some of the stuff that's in the database. So, for example, the earthquake web page will show you graphically where all the earthquakes happen on throughout the world. The Disney web page will show you uh, graphically uh, the wait times that are greater than 10 minutes for some of the attractions, as long as it's between 9 and 9 and 10, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. If you try to hit the Disney web page at 2 in the morning, it's not going to have anything because there's no wait times because everything's closed. Uh, and then the NetFlow shows you the NetFlow traffic going on in my home um, in the last 24 hours. And with that said, let's go ahead and look at the demo. All right, so this is the uh, unsecured uh, NiFi demo. Um, you can see the top is uh, www.nifidesigns.com, and this takes you to the uh, overall page that describes what the uh, demo is all about. Talks a little bit of some of the different flows, has some of the URLs of where you can look at some of the web uh, results, and then we actually have another page that shows all the URLs for the web page results. So the first thing you're going to have to do is um, uh, go ahead and uh, we're going to download that guest cert I was talking about. So you just click here, and you'll go ahead and save it download it. We'll go up here and go ahead and see that we actually downloaded it. I think it's called guest.p12. There it is there. And what we're going to do next is go ahead and uh, again I'm using Firefox. We're going to go ahead and import that cert into our browser. And how we do that is we just go down to advanced and click on certs, view certs, and we're going to import a cert in the lower left center here, lower center here. We're just going to import that cert and then we're going to grab the password that was on the main web page. Uh, let's go back to that web page for a second. And grab that password. Whoop. And use that password word uh, for our cert. Associate that with our cert. So again, we're going to go ahead, go over, import the cert, and then we're going to put that password in. And now we've imported the cert. Okay. And we can go ahead and view it and see that, yeah, we actually have it. It's called NiFi Guest. <coughs> and now we're going to go ahead and close everything out and then go to that actual secure website. And again, it's, since it's self-signed, it's going to say that it's not secured. Uh, if you just go click Add Exception, Get Certificate, and Confirm the Exception, it should take you right to the NiFi website that I put together. And I'll give it a minute here. And here it is. So here's the secured NiFi demo page uh, with the three flows I was talking about, as long as well as the web page flow at the bottom. Let's um, so go ahead and shrink these out a little bit and kind of zoom in. So you can see at the top we have our earthquake uh, event group that we ta I talked about. And if you double click on here, you can look inside to see how the flow works. Um, like the first thing, for example, will be acquiring the data. And you can see that um, there's a couple processes I he have here to go to the actual USGS website. It actually goes out and grabs the um, uh, quake data. And I think it grabs it 13 minutes past the hour. So once an hour, it grabs that data. And it goes ahead and it gets processed. And if you want to take a look at the status, you can see for the last, um, I don't know, 12 hours or so, um, the number of flow files we took. And again, it's once per hour. So that's what you'd expect to see is one flow file every hour being pulled out from this processor. If we go back to the top and we look at, um, let's see, the Disney World one. Um, similar thing, acquire the data. In this case, um, if you look at the Disney wait times, this is a custom processor I wrote. So if you look at it, you can just see that, you know, it's, it looks like a regular NiFi processor, except I selected which parks you can actually query. I query all of them in this case. Um, and then the other thing is you can look at the data that's been generated. And in this case, it's uh, every five minutes. You can see there's a downtime between 10 p.m. and 9 a.m. So every five minutes we grab data except during those hours. And if you look at the top, you can see how, it, how the query works um, and how the cron works, basically. So you can see it's every five minutes between the hours of 9 a.m. and 10 p.m. Okay, so this is going to be something you just go in and just kind of start poking around and maybe seeing how things work. Uh, this data is JSON data, so if we go up a little bit and we looked at the parse JSON, you can see how I actually go through and take this Disney data and parse out the JSON events so I can store it to a database. And 
And those are all retrieved from the data at the Disney website. And then we have the NetFlow data. Um, again, similar thing. We have a, a listener. I don't really show it right now. This is kind of blocked out. I might show it later. But basically, it's a listener that listens for data from the Minify in my basement. It untars the file. And then it splits out the uh, entries into single lines, single JSON lines. And then we go ahead and store that in the database. Um, and if you want to look at the uh, at the parsing, how that works, again, it's similar to what you saw in the Disney. It's just, it's just parsing out the specific NetFlow data information. And finally, at the bottom, there's the uh, web page I put for processing web page. Oh, first let me show you the Minify. This is what's actually running on the Minify in my basement. Uh, I can go to Minify later, but basically you create a flow and then you just transfer it over to your Minify. It really doesn't have a GUI associated with it. And in this case, I'm grabbing all the NetFlow data off a certain directory. I'm running what's called a NetFlow uh, NF dump command that formats the data. And then it goes ahead and uh, saves it off, or actually it uh, merges it together. Uh, makes it make sure it's JSON compliant and then merges it together and then sends it out to that remote website that I just talked about. Again, I'm not showing this particular processor at this time. I might show it later. I usually don't show the SQL queries to the database just because I just don't want to do it right now. Um, but you can see here how the insert works. And there's actually, um, if you look at the properties, there's actually a connection pool I use to actually go ahead and um, connect to my database that's running on another server. These are all variables I have set in a properties file, so you really can't get the true values because you can't see the properties. And then, of course, we can look at all the data that's come through the database. So, you know, this is everything NetFlow, Disney, and the Quake stuff all coming through the database. It comes through at one point. And then let's see, f we also have errors I collect. Uh, I don't think I have any at this time, but if any errors were to be generated, I have them all directed over to this processing group here. And it's, since the processing group isn't running, if anything showed up, it just it just hang out here and you can see it. And let's see, I think finally we have, let's see, let me bring this up a little bit and look at the web page stuff. Yeah, so this is how the web pages get processed. It goes through this processor here. Again, I don't show the SQL queries, but I do show the flows. And it just goes through the database and does a query, gets the data back, um, and then it parses out the information. I believe it's, 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 to make a long story short, it comes out as JSON and goes through and actually um, selects uh, the JSON data and displays that in a web page. So when you do the HTTP to this website, um, it goes through this flow here. And again, you, if you hit it, you would actually see the data go through it. And then finally, the data gets returned at the bottom to the web page request. And that's it. So let's go ahead and look at some of the graphs now. OK, so we're back at the uh, regular welcome page for NIFI, um, the NIFI page. And I'm just going to step through really fast some of these uh, graphs and what they look like and how you can access them. So for the earthquake flow, uh, you just click on this 24-hour um, tab here, and it'll actually show the last 24-hour earthquake data recorded. And then you get like a, a Google map thing that's showing uh, little uh, icons of where all the earthquakes happen. Uh, if you click on one of the little pins there, you can actually get a description of um, where the earthquake occurred, what time it occurred, and the magnitude. Uh, if it's green, it's not a it's a small earthquake, and red, of course, is a big earthquake. Um, and then you look at the large quakes for the last I don't know however long I've run this thing for the last the last week or so. So these are all quakes that are bigger than magnitude five. Um, and again, you can just kind of look through all this stuff and and figure it out and just play around with it. Um, so you do that. And then for the Disney stuff, again, if it's between 9 a.m. and 10 p.m. Uh, you can look at some of the wait times. So if we click on the Magic Kingdom one, uh, you can look and see what the wait times are for some of the rides in the Magic Kingdom at that particular time. Uh, again, I only do for the rides that are more than 10 minutes. So if you look at maybe the Seven Dwarfs ride, it looks like it's like a little over two-hour wait to go see it. Whereas maybe, uh, let's see, the Haunted Mansion is only a 15-minute wait. So again, this is updated every five minutes in the database, and um, it just shows you the rides that are more than 10 minutes long for the wait. And then we got, uh, of course, you can do Epcot, Hollywood Studios, Animal Kingdom, you know, same sort of deal. And then you can finally do the NetFlow processing. You can see the traffic for the last 24 hours in the basement of my uh, router, in my basement. 
Uh, if you click on that, um, you can see for the last 24 hours, so you can see with activity. So maybe it looks like 4 or 5 in the morning, something was going on. I don't know, maybe my son was watching some videos or something, who knows. Um, but uh, you can get a good idea for the traffic. And again, I just happen to choose 24 hours, and I think I've been collecting that flow data for the last month or so. And you can certainly delve into some more you know, specifics uh, related to NetFlow as far as you know, source destination IPs and all that stuff. You can read all about it um, and play with it in there. And I think that's it. So again, I have all the web page stuff you can go to here at the bottom. And then I talk a little bit about Minify.